स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया morning and welcome to the third lecture in the online series introduction to interaction design i am your course instructor dr sonal atre assistant professor in the department of design at iit rudki so in the last lecture we saw how design encompasses the area of interaction design where interaction design fits into the whole scheme of the design domain we also saw that how the use of certain principles like words visual representations space time and behavior help designers create better interactions so today we will see the process of design in terms of how design interaction for problem solving can be done to generate more ideas and solutions to create better interactive systems there are several uh domains that utilize design as a process for example architectural design uh behavioral sciences industrial design product design so there are some similarities in all of these areas in terms of how they carry out the research process or how the design uh, process is conducted so we'll discuss the double diamond process so there are four phases in the design process and the other uh, domains of design like architecture design in uh, industrial design product design and many others they follow a similar approach although it may vary uh, slightly depending on the problem and what is the solution we are trying to look at so these broad phases are discover define develop and deliver so the double diamond was introduced by the design council and it presents a framework that allows companies to apply design characteristics to find creative solutions and innovative ideas so many companies that we know we interact with their products such as apple and microsoft they use the double diamond process to problem solving so we can broadly break this process into two parts one is the problem space and the other is the solution phase so the diamond on the left which has discover and define on top that is the problem space and on the right the de develop and deliver is the solution space so as we can see that the one individual uh, diamond is starting from a point and then it is diverging so the first stage or the first step here is the divergence but before we actually start working on this uh, method we start applying it there are a few uh, preparations that usually should be made so what two things are important when we are planning to apply the uh, double diamond is the team that is going to work on the project and the second is the space so since this is a highly collaborative activity so the team has to be chosen in a very careful manner that all the members they are able to contribute to all the phases that will be involved in this process so for example one stage would require to interview uh, people to get their feedback so does the person in the team does he or she have those skills to actually talk with people without hurting their sentiments so this is an example that how we need different uh, strengths in the team the other important uh, requirement is that of space because uh, this is not an activity that will be covered in a single day it will be a long process it will go on for a long time so space is required wherein people can come back and continue with the process and this is since a very hands on uh, exercise so generally the walls are uh, utilized for this purpose 
for putting the ideas. So, the whole team can monitor the progress of the uh, entire team. So, in the first uh, step which is the uh, discover, so we can see that how the triangle is opening up that means, we are now diverging into the area. So, here we explore the problems and the main purpose is to find the root cause. So, that is uh, something that we will be able to find and define at the end of this phase. So, there are certain uh, methods that are used, uh, I will mention just a few. So, one is mind maps. So, just like a map has several nodes, there are connections. So, what are those connections between for example, a problem with the product, what kind of problems can we map. Then we have multi perspective uh, problem framing. So, wherein um, like as a lot of different people have different perspectives for a certain service or a product. So, in a similar manner, what are the different perspectives around this particular uh, problem area. Then brainstorming where a lot of ideas are discussed um, amongst the team members, so that uh, we are able to come up with some good uh, ideas at the end of the exercise. Desk research wherein a secondary research is conducted and also field research which consists of uh, activities like interviews, uh, focus groups and uh, observations. So, these three are very important uh, three steps uh, especially the field research because this uh, tells the designer that what are the problems or challenges that are being faced by the user. So, interviews can be also broken down into three different types. So, structured, semi structured and uh, open ended. So, here the degree of freedom basically is what is different. Uh, so, in structured interviews the researcher has a set of questions and he or she does not deviate from those set of questions. In semi structured some of the answers may lead to some other questions, further questions, further interrogation and in open ended questions there is more flexibility and they are more organic in nature. So, once the uh, discovery stage is over then we will be having a lot of uh, data for us to analyze and then define the problem further. So, then we move on to the next stage, but we are still in the first phase of uh, problem identify, uh, identification uh, stage itself. So, now we are converging to take up all the data that we have collected to define the problem and put it in a problem statement in, in that way, so that we are able to see the problem uh, statement. So, we are able to then go to the next step and find solutions. So, here also uh, we use several methods like root cause analysis, the method of five whys, wherein we keep on asking why, why, why until we come to the root cause of the problem. Then use a story that how the narrative is uh, important uh, for this stage and also the affinity uh, diagrams. So, these are several techniques that are uh, used. Now, when we come to the next stage uh, and again here we will be diverging, this is the develop stage. So, now we have some um, uh, you know we have a problem statement and now we have to develop some solutions, some prototypes. So, there are several uh, ways in which we can go uh, ahead in this uh, as well. So, one is the minimum viable product or MVP. So, this is a quick technique to just how can uh, by minimal uh, you know uh, investment we can come up with a solution. So, we can test it out. Rapid prototyping, uh, so we can quickly make some prototypes, they may be paper prototypes, they may be cardboard prototypes, something that can be quickly made, so that we can analyze them further. Storytelling and consumer uh, journey uh, mapping, wherein uh, we map the steps that the consumer takes. For example, uh, while purchasing 
something on an online platform, what are the challenges or hurdles the user is facing? So, we map those uh, journeys of the user to find those challenging areas that can be worked upon or we can find solutions. So, once the uh, prototypes are designed then of course, we are testing them as well and in the initial stage they may be low fidelity prototypes and later on of course, the high fidelity prototypes will be developed. And finally, in the deliver stage where again we are converging. So, here once the delivery of the uh, final solution has been made, of course, we will follow it up, we will take the feedback of the user, we will conduct surveys and also another method of shadowing where we uh, follow the user like a shadow and we see that again observe that what are the areas where the user is probably you know coming across some discomfort or some problem in accessing or using the solution. So, that it can be maybe again modified if required. Now, the next is the design thinking process. So, before we go into the design thinking process, we should first understand that what is the ideology uh, behind design thinking. So, design thinking is a methodology that aims to tackle highly complex problems. So, in our daily life, we come across many different types of uh, you know problems. So, some can be small problems uh, which can be easily tackled and there could be some uh, bigger problems. So, small problems that are also called tame problems and uh, difficult ones known as the uh, wicked problems. So, let us take an example of a tame problem for a day from our daily life and see that uh, what is the difference between these two. So, for example, uh, I am being visited by a friend of mine and I am preparing tea. So, I have prepared the tea for both of us and then suddenly the uh, bell rings and another friend joins. So, in that case probably what I will do is either I will make another cup of tea or maybe I will divide whatever I have prepared into three different cups. Although the quantity will be less, but still we all three will be able to enjoy the cup of tea. So, this is a small problem where a simple logic can be utilized and we can come to a solution. Now, there are some other problems which are much larger in nature, much complex and we cannot use such simple logic to solve these problems. So, for example, uh, world peace, world hunger. So, these are very big problems that cannot be solved simply. Now, there are uh, businesses as well, which have within their system such kind of wicked uh, problems. So, there may be a problem in understanding the user better, there may be a problem in satisfying the consumer or coming up with a good business plan. So, these are also some very tough, complex and wicked problems. So, here in this kind of a problem where a simple logical approach cannot be undertaken. So, here design thinking uh, technique helps. So, here uh, we can see the first step is empathy. Now, empathy is one of the most important steps because this allows us to see, observe and talk with the user and identify their pain points. So, what are the challenges, problems and difficulties that the users are facing because our ultimate goal is to deliver to them a very good and positive experience. So, what are those challenges that they are facing in receiving a positive experience? Now, since uh, design thinking is an out of the box approach, so uh, some steps uh, may not be very linear. This, uh, uh, this may you know at certain times one may have to go back and forth to actually uh, come up with the final solution. So, once we have empathized uh, with the users. So, now we will come to know that what are the various areas, 
what are the problems. So, we can put them in different baskets that how do we you know in order to tackle them further. And now, once we have got all these problems, we will now create a problem statement. So, what is how can we categorize all of that information to come up with one single problem statement. Now, for example, there is a food delivery system, food delivery company. Now, one way they can put up a problem statement is that let us increase the delivery charges by 50 percent. So, uh, that is one way of putting it up and the other way of putting up the similar statement, but empathizing with the users could be that how can we deliver to people or customers living beyond 5 kilometer radius. So, this is also going to do the, the same purpose which is giving them more you know revenue or uh, more benefit, but this is a way to define the problem so that we are also empathizing with some customers who are not able to benefit take benefit from our service. So, we are also going to expand our business right. Now, the next uh, step here is to ideate. So, here we uh, generate ideas and there is no restriction in this particular stage. Uh, the whole team is free to come up with uh, interesting ideas, out of the box ideas, ideas that may or may not be implemented. So, but this stage requires the team to come up with multiple ideas, so that we can then be able to choose the best out of these. So, once we have selected a few uh, good ideas from the whole basket, then we go to the prototype stage. So, in this prototype stage, this is a scaled down version of what the final prototype or final model will look like. And this is a simple model, it can be a paper model or it can be a, a interactive a digital representation, but uh, using fewer resources. And finally, in the uh, test stage, we will check for any flaws or any uh, problems or any gaps that have still you know been left and they have been unaddressed. And finally, then uh, we implement the solution. So, another method uh, that we use is the lean startup uh, process. So, this lean startup process usually has three uh, steps. The first is build, second is measure and third is learn. So, build, measure and learn. This is the loop that is uh, used to come up with the uh, solution. Now, within build, uh, we have products. So, building products, then measuring data and then, uh, then applying uh, learning from the data that we have received and finally, adding more ideas to again build. Now, this uh, method is generally used by startups and also by established companies who want to bifurcate into a new area. So, what is interesting in this process is that it is not a long 5 year business model type of a uh, uh, problem. So, here what is um, uh, you know advisable is that experiment and fail. So, that is the philosophy here. There is no fear of failure when we are uh, using. So, now for this, we also take up those ideas where the users have already demonstrated an interest, like where they would like to use or some kind of problems that they have addressed and they are looking for a solution for that rather than building a solution or a product first and then looking for the consumer for it. So, that is the lean startup uh, process. So, for example, there is a, a fitness application 
So, what this fitness application will probably first do is just create a very simple model of their application with registration and just a few different uh, headings for the users to choose. Once they see the pattern of the users that how they are interacting with this particular model, how many times are they coming back, are they using certain feature much more than the others. So, that will then tell them that what is that the user is looking for and then they can slowly keep on adding more features to make the app more detailed and so that there is more usership. This also uh, helps businesses to recover quickly. So, if a business for example, has put in a lot of effort in planning out a whole 5 year business model and then it fails. So, that is you know a big uh, setback for the company, but here because we are doing quick uh, hypothesis uh, checks, we are taking small hypothesis, testing in them out, if they are passing then we are moving forward, if they are failing then probably we will diverge into some other direction. So, this is not such a big failure as an established or a traditional uh, business and actually failure is uh, expected here in this particular process. The other uh, important aspect here is of the team that who comprises of the team. So, unlike traditional businesses where you know people are looking for certain experience, certain uh, qualifications. So, here the team that is required has to have an open mind, they should be open to experimentation and they should be open to rework on their uh, previous early done work. Because we can see here that build, uh, measure and learn. So, we will continuously uh, keep on applying this to uh, refine our final work. Another process that is uh, used here is the agile process. So, as the name suggests agile meaning flexible. So, this system or process offers flexibility to the design team and here the problems are broken into smaller uh, problems. So, we can see here that the one loop of one stage of the problem is design, then develop, then test, deploy and review. So, this is the uh, step taken for solving one problem and this one problem we can also uh, call it as sprint because it is done very quickly. The time required to uh, finish one problem and go to the next step is usually 2 to uh, 4 weeks depending on the uh, quantum of the uh, problem and the challenges. So, after one sprint we go to the next and next and during the whole process all the stakeholders are in the loop and they are getting the regular feedback as well. So, if there are any inputs they can be incorporated and then we can quickly move forward to the next uh, step. Now, agile uh, think uh, the agile process and design thinking the difference between these two uh, approaches is that agile process is for problem uh, solving and design thinking is for problem identification. So, if design thinking and agile process are combined, then they are going to be very effective in problem identification and for giving the solution to the problem. So, this becomes a, a combination of these two becomes a very strong approach for problem solving. Another method which uh, was quite popular, uh, it still is which is the six uh, sigma process. So, this initially uh, came about in 1980s where the focus was for quality control. Now, this process has two offshoots. So, you can see DMA IC and DMA DV which is define, measure, anal analyze. These first three steps are same the difference is in the last two steps and the first one, the one with improve and control DMAIC 
is applied on companies or products that are already existing and DMA DV with the last two stages being design and validate they are for new products that are planned or are envisioned. Now, here the problem is uh, defined uh, the budget and all other considerations are taken into account. Then of course, the uh, uh, we measure um, uh, with the feedback received, we analyze it, uh, we improve the system in the, in the first uh, area in the existing where there is an existing problem, we improve it and then we put some control measures. So, that um, there is a constant improvement. It it should not the performance should not go down. In the second approach which is for newer uh, products or processes. So, here we again define measure analyze and we here then design or make the prototype and then validate it or test it out to see if it is working as expected or there are some challenges. So, here we can see the broad differences between uh, the two approaches where DMA IC is initiated from any existing problem and DMA DV is initiated from an innovation or an idea. Uh, existing processes employ DMA IC where, whereas, new processes use DMA DV. So, you can see that how the differences are also in the size of the team, because in the DMA IC we are going to improve and control, but the product or the service is already operational. So, we need a smaller team, but in DMA DV since it is a new product or a service and a lot of uh, brains would be required for the processes of define, measure, analyze, design and verify or validate. So, a larger team is expected. Similarly, the time frame also is longer for DMA DV uh, problem, because we are starting from the point uh, 0 here, uh, whereas in DMA IC we already have uh, reached a certain point and we are taking off from there. So, you can see that how these two approaches are uh, different. Another uh, approach that we use is the human centered design process. So, as the name suggests, human is in the center of the process. So, the process needs to take into account the human requirements. So, human centered design is basically an approach to interactive systems uh, development to make them usable and useful by focusing on the users, their needs and requirements. And we apply strategies such as human factors, engineering and usability knowledge and techniques. So, um, this process is uh, cyclical. So, what it means is it is not uh, linear and sometimes when we are in that stage of the design process we realize that what are the lacuna or what are the gaps and then we may want to uh, you know visit the previous step again and make the required changes or conduct more research. Maybe in the research stage there were some gaps are still remaining. So, we may want to go back and study them, understand them better and then come back to our next stage of prototype for example. So, so this is what makes it a fluid and continuous uh, process and when all the participants are satisfied and the solution has been uh, identified, then it is when the process of this ends. And as we go along uh, further and practice more, so these cycles keep on becoming shorter and shorter. So, initially the cycle may require a designer or the team to go back and forth, but over time and with experience these uh, cycles become much more smaller and less time consuming. Now, 
the human center design process is also explored by uh, IDEO. So, IDEO is a very well known company in the uh, business in the area of design and we can see here that how they are uh, approaching this uh, process. So, we can see that they are diverging first in the uh, inspiration phase and the problem is identified, it is framed and it is explored. So, what is done is that people who are going to be impacted by this product or service, they have been talked with and they have been identified first, talked with, their needs have been documented. And once we have enough uh, information and data, this step will organically take us to the next stage, which is our ideation stage. Now, in ideation stage, we can see that there is test and learn, there are two uh, things here. So, this again is like a cyclical process we discussed in the human center design in the previous slide that how one can go back and forth between the steps. So, here within the ideation stage, we are moving from uh, test to learn, so that we are able to come up with the uh, uh, best possible outcome from this stage. And then finally, we are converging. So, we can see how the graph is moving. So, we are converging to a final uh, output, but before we implement it, so there is a uh, the, it is being measured that what is the output and are there any more gaps that need to be incorporated. So, that uh, learning is applied and then again it is moving in the measured stage and finally, it is delivered and even after delivering the final output of course, the, uh, uh, the implementation stage may again go through some uh, more changes if required, if the final product still is unable to deliver to the best of its abilities. So, one example uh, here from IDEO uh, using the, uh, the uh, human center design is uh, that they were asked to uh, create um, a device for the nurses in the hospitals. So, the device was required to enter some data, the process that is going on, there are several steps involved in a surgery and what has happened, what tick, tick, tick. So, basically documenting that what all stages or steps have been uh, completed. So, when the designers uh, heard of this problem, so they could in their mind, they saw a device which would look something like. Uh, uh, you know, a flat disc that they could hold in both the hands and you know, write on it. So, when they went to the hospital to actually uh, see how the surgery happens in the real life scenario. So, then they saw that when the patient is being carried on a stretcher or he is transferred to the operation theatre bed, that how he reaches out for the nurse's hand for uh, support. So, uh, that uh, told the designers that the nurse requires one hand to be free in order to comfort the patient. So, it cannot be a two hand operation, it will have to be a one hand operation and then they designed a device wherein the thumb could be used to operate it and the other hand of the nurse was available, so that the patient could, could be comf comforted. So, the next method is the six think, uh, thinking hats, wherein uh, as you can see there are six colored uh, hats, each denoting a different type of a personality or a feeling. So, the blue has for example, process. So, if a, a team member is wearing a blue hat, so then they will be thinking about the process, how to implement it. If somebody is wearing a red hat, they will be talking from the perspective of the feelings. If somebody is wearing a black hat, then they will be critical. So, they will be very cautious. So, uh, each color of the hat which symbolizes uh, 
the way different people observe the reality and this is uh, one method where the observer can put or take off a hat and add another hat. So, this adds that dimension to the uh, whole process. So, first to explore the problem, then next to develop a set of solutions and finally, to select a solution through the critical analysis. So, if uh, sometimes the group may get stuck, so this uh, tool is very helpful uh, when no ideas are coming across, then wearing or changing the hat can uh, help one uh, uh, come up with some uh, interesting solution. So, this brings uh, to the end of today's uh, lecture. So, in today's lecture, we covered the different design uh, interaction design processes and what we have seen is that all of them highlight the importance of a good team and uh, how the team members all contribute to identify, define, prototype and finally, deliver the solution to the uh, user. So, in the next class, we will try to understand the user more in detail and what are some usability uh, goals that the user is looking for, what are some of the user experience goals that make the product uh, much more interactive and what are some other uh, cases which we need to uh, consider while we are designing. So, uh, thank you and see you in the next lecture.